What's going on? What's going on? I just got off. Man, I'm I'm gonna tell you something, man. Dealing with customers can be a pain in the ass. I, I work customer service at an auto shop, and man, like I get so many stories from people, man. And like the annoying thing about it is people are always trying to make their problem your problem. And I'm not a jerk. I'm a very, you know, um, compassionate person to a degree. So like I don't I don't haul off and just you know uh, make people the bad guy for no reason. Here's the thing, man. So this lady comes in my shop, not saying no names, of course, and she has a truck that she had at other shops, and she's having a noise in the front end. So I tell her, you know, it's a fee to check it out, this and that, this and that. So we check the vehicle out, dude. This is one of the worst condition cars I've seen. I, there were like literally two bolts holding the transmission to the engine. Literally like two bolts. Whoever worked on it before, the bolts out of the transmission bell housing, which is, if you don't know what that is, there's like uh, usually an average of maybe 15 to, to maybe more in some cases, bolts that actually hold the transmission and the engine together. Two integral parts of your vehicle were basically not secured on the car. So I tell her all this and I tell her, it's, you know, there's maintenance issues that she didn't take care of. The car needs some front end work, this and that. She gives me the whole rundown how she had a warranty company that only fixed one side or something like a whole lot of mumbo jumbo, really, because at the end of the day, the car needs what it needs. So she gives me the warranty information. I hate dealing with warranty companies because it's just like insurance companies. They, they never they want the money every month on time from the customers, but they never want to pay out. It just they don't they're not trying to pay no money because the people who are in charge of whatever area that you live in They usually get bonuses and stuff if there's under a certain amount that was uh, spent I know how that works because I knew people that worked in that department and that kind of thing So a lot of times they'll go off and deny stuff that they had no right to deny Depending on what your policy is. So we get into the job. I, I went ahead and got everything approved. We get into the job When we get it torn apart on, on cars just so you understand Sometimes when you get into a job before you get into the job there very well could be something you don't see wrong with the car until you get it torn apart in which case you have to get that other thing taken care of like for instance in this case whatever shop worked on that car they basically I'm not I'm trying to speak because I know a lot of pe people that are listening here aren't mechanics there's a piece that you have to that goes inside of another piece and it's like machine just enough to, to be pressed inside it it's called the wheel bearing hub so whatever shop she had it at decided to sand the hub down for some stupid reason they tried to re-engineer the wheel bearing which is probably why it went bad in the first place so I call the lady and tell her, hey, you need two wheel hubs also. And she's giving me a whole bunch of, I don't have no extra money, blah, 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 this and that, this and that. Um, my warranty company should take care of everything. I already talked to the warranty company. I gave them the price. They're covering this amount. You have a deductible and you have a certain amount that they're not going to cover. She don't want to hear it. She goes on for hour, like almost damn near an hour yapping about how she don't have the money. I honestly don't care because... I mean, again, I'm there to fix the car. I don't care what your life arrangements are. It's not my business. I don't care uh, who pays for it in terms of it doesn't matter as long as the labor and the parts are paid for, period. So I have to listen to all this. She hangs up on me, of course, because I'm telling her the same thing. Ma'am, your car needs this. Well, I don't want to get that. Just put it back together how it was. You can't really put it back together how it was because, for one, the new parts aren't going to work with the parts that were already damaged when we pulled them off. Why not? I don't understand that because they need new parts put on it. You can't just put the old parts on Why not? So basically, that was that's how the conversation went for almost an hour. So with that said, I get a call for about, from, uh, I think it was about maybe 20 minutes later, from my husband. So her husband gets on the phone. Yeah, why the hell are you not putting together my wife's fucking car, blah, 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 blah. So I tell him, sir, your wife had this car other places. They mutilated this car. When it landed on my doorstep, I have a car that basically was mistreated and not put back together right. And I basically thoroughly explain to him that this is not entirely, um, the, the information was not entirely presented to him. And he basically says, oh, okay. Well, how much is it? Like completely, whatever she told him, she made me look like the bad guy, of course. So when I explained it to him, he basically, we rationalized everything out. So then he says, well, how much is it? I tell him how much it is. So he says, all right, let me call you back. I'm off the next day. Today we finished the car. 
and she basically is asking me to look at something else on the car after I told her the car was done and she can come pick it up. The warranty company had already paid what they were gonna pay going through a tunnel. So when that happens, um, the next procedure is once I get that payment from them, she has to pay her deductible and she has to pay the balance. I call her and let her know what the balance is. She says, okay, I'm getting the money together. Then she says, can you go ahead and look at this other thing she wants me to look at with the lights? So I look at that and we tell her, hey, this car is gonna need more work. This is wrong with the car. She don't wanna hear that, of course. You know, she's like, well, I just spent all this money on this car and why is it that I have to buy more stuff for the car? The car almost has 200,000 miles on it, naturally. Nobody wants, no, they don't care about that though. They just want the car fixed. They think that you you know, you know, go and you spend money in one area on a car and that's gonna fix the whole entire car and they're not gonna have to spend any money on it again. So that's not how the car works. Anybody who understands cars knows that when you fix a part on the car, sometimes other things go bad that aren't related. But of course, you know, customers who don't have any money don't wanna hear that. So as a result, I have to go back and forth with her about why the wiring harness needs to be replaced for the, the headlamps or well, one head one side of the headlamp so um, she basically says well I don't have the money for that so just um, you can go ahead and um, you know uh, pull it out and I'll come get it when I can so I says okay well you got 24 hours to pick it up otherwise they're gonna put storage on it which um, I don't make the rules I just follow them they're gonna put storage on your vehicle why do I gotta pay storage? Blah, 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 blah. You need to rethink that because I don't have the money to pay this and that. You told me up front it was gonna be this price and then later on you told me it was gonna be another price. And I had already explained to her thoroughly, when you get into a job, you don't always know what you're gonna find when you get into it. But she's not trying to hear that because she doesn't have any money. So the only thing she's hearing is you have to pay more money. And it's not, and she's hearing, I'm not being fair to you, but you have to pay more money. That's what she heard. So again, she goes on another tirade for another 25 minutes, which I'm like, okay. The bottom line is the car has to be picked up in 24 hours, otherwise there's gonna be storage on it. So, you know, she ends up, well, you, I need to talk to your manager. I say, man, my manager's not until Monday. Well, I need you to get in touch with him now. I can't get in touch with him now. Otherwise, I'll put you on the phone with him, but unfortunately, I can't. Well, um, you need to do something about this because this isn't fair. I'm like, ma'am, you have a balance left over on your car, which we fixed you have to pay us in a certain amount of time. I cannot have your car just sit here collecting dust, taking up space where I could be making money in another on, uh, on the lift that it's sitting on or in that Bay Area or even on the, ins the insurance. If something happens to this car, I'm liable and responsible. Therefore, you need to come get it as soon as you can. Otherwise, there's gonna be storage on it. So, basically, she didn't wanna hear that, of course. So. The car is still sitting there and um, it's just, it's a pain in the ass. These are the kind of things that service writers and, and mechanics usually deal with at shops because man, people are completely irrational and the worst kind of people to deal with are people who try to take shortcuts on fixing their car and take it other places to try to save money and then what ends up happening is they cut so many corners they end up screwing themselves over in the long run because if you just brought it to the right place in the first place, you wouldn't be bringing it back somewhere else. And I can already look at this car and tell she probably has some crackhead fix the car for like a hundred bucks or some shit. He fucked the car up. He she tried to get back in touch with him. His phone was off or some shit. Whatever. When, when I usually know how this shit works because I've been doing this shit since I was like twelve. So I mean I know how this. I've been I've seen this so many times. But you got people. Well, go ahead and put this part on for me. It's only the part's gonna cost me this amount of money. You're only charging me a hundred dollars labor. A shop is gonna charge me five hundred dollars labor. The job gets done, but it's fucked up and it doesn't last. Then she takes it to another shop. The other shop doesn't want to deal with it. Of course, they put her out. And she has to take it to another shop all the way across town. That way she knows that that person doesn't talk to this person from this shop. So that's basically what happens. Some people get ping pong from shop to shop because some of those guys uh, know each other and talk to each other and know they'll give you a heads up telling you, you know, this lady's a pain in the ass or whatever. So that's what happens. So don't be an asshole if you're a customer, you know, if the mechanic's telling you something and he's trying to explain to you and willing to explain to you how it works, don't just automatically assume he's a bad guy because that is not always the case. Some of us actually just want to fix the damn vehicle and get it out of the shop because some of you people are annoying this shit and pains in the asses. But then some people are cool. So just a little friendly reminder to anybody who thinks about taking their car to an auto shop. Of course, make sure you take it somewhere that's reputable and somewhere that's uh, a good uh, facility. And don't be an asshole. All right, so with that said, like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you guys think. Again, if you can hit that subscribe button with your knuckles, you're an excellent puncher with knockout accuracy. Um, meanwhile, I'll holler you guys later. Peace.